Good afternoon, folks. My name is Leon Pedraza, my assistant. We are 3261 Aerospace Structural Mechanics for Cal Poly Pomona. Today, I will talk a little bit about the behavior of shear forces in a solid shaft, in a lap joint, and in a beam. And I've chosen shear because shear happens to be all along our course. We have, uh, we found shear stress, shear strain, shear flow, shear force, shear tear out, uh, shear max, shear stress again with another formula, and uh, shear flexor. So it's a wide topic. On section five on our handbook, we studied torsion, and we made some uh, important assumptions. We assume that our material must be isotropic and homogeneous, meaning that it must have the same uh, density made out of the same material and same dimensions all along it. We also assume that uh, our, our analysis must remain into the elastic manner, linear elastic manner. This is what it means, for example, in our, in our shear strain curve, when we apply a tensile test, we grow uh, in a linear manner or strain or stress grows in a linear manner up to the uh, modulus of elasticity, which is the FTP, towards the FTY, which is the tensile yield point. After the FTY point, we uh, run into the plastic uh, region, which means our material will deform permanently uh, towards failure at the FTU. So we must remain into the elastic region below FTY. I've prepared this little shaft right here, assuming that uh, applying all those assumptions. So when we apply a torque in, in, our, in our shaft, we see our deflection right here. This change in deflection is called gamma. The angle gamma is just a shear strain and is related to the angle of twist, which is the shear stress. And is the maximum shear stress happens to be at the edge of the circle. So uh, the distribution of the shear stress would look like this, where the, where the T max is at the end. So the relationship that exists between the angle of twist and, the, and, and gamma, the shear strain, is that we can calculate the actual force that I apply with my hand by uh, using the equation of angle of twist is equal to uh, torque times the length of the beam divided by the modulus of elasticity, the shear modulus, I mean, sorry, shear modulus, which is the, uh, the characteristics of material, times the polar moment of inertia of our solid shaft. Uh, we also, on, in section eight now from our handbook, we study about shear flows. And I happen to be something, uh, you know, I found this to be something very, very beautiful. The shear flow and the term bleeding and feeding is actually true. It happens in a beam because beam people, uh, I mean, beam are actually people. So uh, let's see how it works. When we apply a transverse shear force, we develop another shear force that runs along the beam, runs like this. And then when we apply the normal force, we can actually see how the, the shear flow runs through it. So it looks how beautiful it is. It runs through the beam, it's alive, it's a live flow. And the max, the max shear flow is right here, the middle, because there is no, no shear on the top, no shear at the bottom, the shear is happening right in the middle. So the shear distribution would look like this, the max in the middle. So let's see one more time how it runs, the shear flow. Now with three pieces. You see, this is something really beautiful. I really love it. I really love it. You see how, how the shear flow is alive. This is alive. The beam is alive. This is the shear flow is a, it's just the swirl of the beam. It's beautiful. So now um, another idealization. Let's pin them together. Let us pin them together. We have so one pin here. What's inside? And we have another pin, and another pin, not pin. <laughs> so another pin. And then we have another pin. So 
But when we bring it together and we try to reflect it, it's actually more difficult to reflect it because now it becomes one part. We have a uh, bigger area, so it's, uh, it's more difficult to reflect. So what happens inside is that this beautiful shield flow that is alive is actually trying to tear out the fasteners, you see? So when we move like that, I hope you see it. See how it tries, it's, it's, it's trying to tear out the, the fasteners. So that reminds me and brings me back to our other section of our handbook, which is section 4.3, when we see, remember those uh, fasteners, we have a lab joint. When we apply a force pulling this way and another force pulling this way, now you can see how this force is going to tear out the fasteners. So this force is running toward through one, two fasteners. So the equation to calculate the force per fastener should be P over two, P over two. And what happens if we add another plate? Then now we have the same force, but now it's running to it's running through one, two, three, four, and that we call it double shear. So our, our question to calculate the force per fastener should be P over four. P over four. And that, that's how it's done. Well, this is from pretty much everything I can come up with. Sure. I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you very much.